Will crabs cross an electrified undersea cable? That's what we're trying to figure out. Marine renewable energy is becoming a more and more popular alternative, and that's going to be great to help combat climate change. But we also need to make sure that that is compatible with fisheries. Offshore wind is coming to the West Coast. One of the advantages of offshore wind is that it's very complementary to solar energy. And when the sun goes down and no more electricity is produced from the sun, we can easily transition to offshore wind, which has its peak production time when we most need it. Underwater energized cables are what is used to transfer the electricity that's produced from an offshore wind turbine onto shore. Commercial fishermen have expressed concern about introducing a lot of the electromagnetic fields that come from underwater energy cables and how it might affect crab behavior. That's why it was important for us to partner with Occidental College and local fishermen to design and conduct this experiment. My name is Steve Escobar. I'm a commercial fisherman. I've been doing it for about 30 years now. For me, it's a way of life. It's something I love to do. I've always loved to do it. I just couldn't imagine doing anything else. Commercial fishing is pretty much the lifeblood of a lot of communities. Climate change will definitely affect fisheries in the future. The slowdown climate change will be wonderful. But the fishing community is pretty diverse. There will be people that will have a real concern with the cables. There's probably as much support as there is opposition to offshore energy. BOEM had us design this experiment to test if crabs would be able to cross those cables underwater. We had a local fisherman, Steve Escobar, build us a bunch of traps for the experiment. And so for each experimental unit, we had two traps and they were attached by a caged tunnel. Steve loaded all of those cages onto his boat and dropped them all into the water. We then placed them along an existing undersea cable that was buried just a little bit by sand, but we could test the presence of the cable with an electromagnetic frequency reader. So five of the experimental cages, we moved away from the cable to see how crabs react when they're not near cable at all. And so we placed the cages along the electrified cable so that the crab would have to make a decision to go across the cable to a baited trap or not go across the cable to a baited trap. When we put crabs into the cages, the crab would drop down into the tunnel. Sometimes we'll see them and go immediately to one trap or the other. Occasionally we'll see them just sit in the trap and not make any decision. Sometimes we'll see them sit there for a while and then slowly move towards one trap. We started the experiment in April. We went back day after day, going through more than 100 crabs a day. So over this several month process, we did more than 1,200 trials. We finished the experiment in July. After months of collecting data, we took the results back to the lab and started analyzing them. We found overall that crabs crossed the cable about 50% of the time. So they were just as willing to cross the cable to get to a baited trap as not cross the cable to get to a baited trap. For the fisheries I'm involved with, I don't see any conflict with offshore energy and my fishing operations. I don't think the cables are gonna be an issue. I'm not losing area, I'm not losing catch, I'm not incurring more costs. For the larger aspects of offshore development, that's pretty good news because what BOEM wants to do is to figure out how offshore energy and commercial fishing can coexist. And this study is an important step in that direction.